name is Amy Gross. Um, I grew up in uh, New York on Long Island, about uh, 40 minutes from New York City. And I'm a fiber artist, um, and I've been living in South Florida for about, I'd say, 13 years in November. A fiber is a generalized term that we use to describe anything that's made either with fabric or a combination of fabric and yarn, thread, uh, things that are beaded. So it expands. It doesn't have to be specifically fiber, but if it's primarily fiber, then we just kind of lump them all together. The work of Ernst Haeckel, who was a 19th century um, German uh, biologist, a naturalist, philosopher, and artist, uh, who I think was one of the first to take the world that he saw through a microscope and then create um, artwork from it. He created these lithographs that were like um, a combination of his own imagination and what he observed as a scientist. And so it was this beautiful synthesis between what he observed and his own personal um, artistic sensibility. The artist that I think about most is Louise Bourgeois, who just died, and she also, I mean, lived in tremendously long time, uh, because she took very personal, very specific stories about her life and created such a wide range of objects that told those stories, but also in, talked about so many other things at the same time. Well, the one rule that I set for myself is that everything has to be um, man-made or artificial. So if there's a leaf, it cannot be a leaf. If there's a twig, it can't be a twig because it's about fake nature. It's about making stuff up and it's about stuff that could last forever. Um, it's not going to rot. It's not going to decay. I mean, I say forever, you know, it's of course not forever. But so I start off with the things that you find in Michael's craft store. I don't have anything uh, art story or fancy. I start off with styrofoam balls uh, with yarn, synthetic yarn, uh, the kind of plastic beads that you find in big vials and plastic bags. Uh, I use, uh, I rip apart old toys for the rubber um, paper. Um, I use a lot of photographs that I take out in nature and uh, manipulate in Photoshop. And uh, it's all stitched together, and sometimes things are held together with glue, but there's absolutely no technique that you really need to study or learn. With this kind of technique, because it's so repetitive, and it's so, um, it's almost insane, because it really requires kind of concentration that no human being you naturally have in any way, uh, that it take, if it takes too long, then you're so incredibly bored. You've worked through the ideas, you're not feeling it anymore, and you're still sitting there threading needles and adding beads uh, ad nauseum. So um, I found now that for me working small is it's because of the process it's much more immediate and so it stays exciting for me. Well the um, I think that my objects started taking the form that they started to take uh, was because people that I loved uh, were being diagnosed with with illnesses that had no symptoms. So everything was contained underneath the surface of things. And it coincided at the same time where I moved to a place where, uh, you know, the South Florida is so naturally inhospitable and that uh, man has worked so hard to create these little islands of lifestyle in this, you know, this subtropical jungle. And that you see in between the communities, these, these 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 environments where you felt that if you actually walked into them, you would never come out again. That you know you'd be eaten by something, or you'd be swallowed up, or a strangler fig would would choke you to death. And then, so I started to be fascinated by the idea of combining what you can see with what you can't see. Uh, when you get a diagnosis, it's not based on anything that you can visually observe. So your mind starts making pictures out of this. So in a sense, artwork is making the invisible visible. You combine what you see with what you can't. And, and this is sort of what started to come out, things that I made up and combined with things that I could see all around me. Yeah, I know it's a fancy word, but it's the most basic thing. It's, it's um, an organism that lives in proximity to another organism and they interact on each other. So I think they just found out that we have like three trillion bacteria, forms of bacteria in our bodies. I think that when we breathe in, we breathe in more spores than you can ever imagine. And it's, everything supports each other. There's uh, symbiosis that's terrible. Uh, I mean, the cancer is one of those. But then there's symbiosis where both of them, both, um, both 
organisms support each other. But it's everything. It's life. It's, it's a metaphor for relationships. It's, it's everything. And I think that once you put a scientific term onto it, it, it sort of dries it out. But it's something that I think that we, we naturally accept without putting a, a specific definition to it. You know, see, I can't, I can't even tell the young version of, of me to, st to stop pretending. I had such an elevated sense of, of self-importance when I was a kid that the, the first time I was ever rejected, I could not believe it. I could not fathom a world where, where you know, where outside of my own little circle um, could actually not appreciate that I was here on this planet making artwork. And uh, I, I think that I gave up very quickly and went off to do stuff that I felt that I could do and that I was going to be uh, successful at because I needed to fill that, that need. And then after a while, I finally realized that nobody gave a damn whether I ever made a thing except for maybe my, my mom and my dad. And, um, and I think that's the most liberating thing is to, to just to not assume that you have any importance at all in the world, that you that you really that the, that the world needs you to come out and make artwork because it doesn't really and it'll be fine without you. So then I think that what happens is that your reason for making work becomes so much more important, more personal. And I think the more personal stuff is the more universal it ultimately becomes. And ideas are wonderful and ideas are, are important, but if ideas are not mixed in with what it's like for you specifically to be on this planet at this time, then it's, it's going to be important for that very small pocket that you're living in and it'll have absolutely no meaning to anybody later on. I don't know. And, and, you know, very little of that seems to have to do with what you think is going to happen. Um, you know, I want my work to be seen. I don't, I'm doing it for myself and I'm glad I'm in a place where I, I'm doing it for myself, but I also want it to leave the room more often than it does. Uh, so it's just a matter of whether the world, the rest of the world finds it interesting. It's going to have to be okay with me if it doesn't. But uh, I think that what happens to me is a combination of, of me still sitting here and working hard and and then what happens in the um the outer world at the same time Emotionally, mentally, stay the fuck away from it. Yeah, probably not. Yeah, yeah. Um, There's a lot of, lot of un, unresolved stuff. It, yeah. <laughs> I don't think I want to resolve it, it that. But it kind of, I'm drawn over here to this, this house here. Yeah, yeah. That's that's the unironic hobby. There are artists out there. I, this, I was very disappointed in myself about a year ago because I realized now there's a whole bunch of artists who are miniaturists at the same time to make this fantastic high concept stuff. And I kept thinking, well, why didn't I make the goddamn connection between my hobby and what I do. Well, what? I didn't. I never what did. What is the, like, what, a lore? Oh, wait, wait, the lights go on. It's even better. Who, who is living in this little house here? This is my wishful, th this is my alter ego. 
Yeah? Yep. What does that what do you well, mean? Well, I sort of share it with my mom. My mom runs the restaurant downstairs because I'm not allowed to do anything with food. Okay. But this is my studio, the studio upstairs. Because I've never had the studio I wanted, so I uh -huh. need a little one. So, okay, so that's like the studio that you wanted upstairs. Yeah. Okay. I've never had a good studio. I've never ever had a freestanding. You know that fantasy with the yeah. windows. And, and where do you get all this, yeah. the tiny stuff? I make a lot of it. Yeah? Yeah. The easel is my favorite thing. I can't make chairs. I'm not good at chairs. Um, do you consider this art? I consider it... No, I don't actually. I really? mean, I, I approach it the same way that I approach art. But to me, it's 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 really just about wish fulfillment. And, and is it's that also, one, of, there's is that no one of your pieces right there? Yeah. It has no, I have no expectations based on it. It's just something that I do. It's not ironic. It's not, it's all about just playing. Would you ever show it anywhere?